It's the Ravens, it's the Bears, it's the NFL on CBS. And welcome, friends, Jim Nance, Bill Sims. One last thought before kickoff. Well, adversity, teams deal with injuries. Who's going to play all that? And now today, you have weather problems, which is going to play into this football game. Decisions that the coaches are going to have to make because of what uh, the weather is going to be doing to the play on the field. The Ravens won the toss and elected to kick to Devin Hester. Devin Hester, exclusively a returner this season with the Bears. And here we go. And Hester wants no part of that return, so we'll bring out Josh McCown. He's in his 11th year with his fifth different team. And he's a great locker room guy. They'll tell you that around the Bears facility. And he has done quite a job in three appearances this year, including a startup at Green Bay, leading Chicago to victory against the Packers at Lambeau. How long? Their rookie first rounder out of Oregon at right guard. And Brandon Marshall, again, posting gigantic numbers. There's McCown, 70 attempts this year without an interception. Actually come in with a sixth offensive lineman. Evan Britton joins that front, offensive front. Over to Marshall. And Jimmy Smith is all over him right away. And shoves him back for no gain. This is a rebuilt Ravens defense. It's coming together much quicker than most people expected. Cody starts for Nata, who is inactive. A late scratch with that knee injury. Suggs with nine sacks on the year. And Ladarius Webb is on the other side from Jimmy Smith. Giving them a pair of strong corners with the Ravens. Second and ten. And it's Forte breaking the tackle. And picking up 15, about half the rushing total he had last week when the Lions contained him to about two yards a carry. Anytime you see a run cut back, you think, okay, it's supposed to go to the right. It's all about the right side of the offensive line. No, a lot of times it's about the back side. They stayed with the block. Good job by Jermon Bushrod. And Matt Forte cuts it back for, hey, big first down. Going into the win, get the nerves out of the way. Always a good feeling. And it begins to rain now as the snap is botched. And McCown able to make the most out of it he possibly can. No gain. When you talk about this game, that rain comes, Jim. It was nice during warm-ups. It's balmy. The wind wasn't a factor. The quarterbacks are going, hey, I love this weather. Grass field, it's good to throw, throw on. And... Uh, here it comes, but Chicago's offense, they want to run the football because they respect the size and the power of the Baltimore defense. You just can't just keep dropping back thinking you're going to block these big guys. Three receivers in on second and ten. Even a little toss on the first play to Marshall. You saw the ball weaving in the winds. Here's McCown. Going to roll out and run with it now. And again, he's just back to the line of scrimmage. Corey Graham comes up he was formerly a bear third and ten on the way not sure what happened that time is I think he was going to throw fake the run and throw a little smoke or something to the outside Jim and there's nobody there the receivers in motion coming in trying to get the blocks he did not see Jeffrey come in and read the defense to get the block that's why the mistake was made hey, solid. The winds really swirl inside of Soldier Field as you see Nata on the sideline again inactive today, but primarily into the gust right now, gusting up to 35. Third and 10. And wide of the mark looking for Alshon Jeffrey. So they had uh, four plays for no gain in that uh, first series. The one run by Forte for 15. And now it's time for Adam Podlish to come out and send the football down the way. Your quarterback throwing against his secondary, the Ravens, they are hot. They are willing to play the football, be aggressive, and they will take chances. So McCown being careful to start the game. Jeremy Kane will snap it back. Patrick Manley, the longtime snapper, is in with an injury. And that snap was affected by the win. One hopper to Tandon Doss. And he's walloped a couple of times, and the ball's picked up by the Bears. The Bears 
And they're going to bring it back to the 34-yard line as McManus takes off with it. Sherrick McManus with the recovery. Will they rule it on the field of fumble? Tandon Doss, leading punt returner in the AFC, just shoved McManus aside. And then McManus reached in and picked his pocket with a beautiful takeaway. There was contact. The ruling on the field is that returner was down by contact. First down, Baltimore. Interesting sequence here. First he stiff arms McManus. And here's the look. See that right knee? Was it down first? The ruling on the field is Tandon Doss was down and we've not had a challenge flag thrown out there by Mark Trestman. Look at the right knee. It's on the ground. He has got contact and that's why Mark Trestman did not challenge it. He saw a replay upstairs. I think it's a good decision on his part. Out of the shotgun, Flacco throws and he's got a completion. And that is Jacoby Jones with the catch. And Joe Flacco, one of 20 quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl MVP. Another one right here in the booth. His line shapes up like this. Monroe, strong acquisition, traded during the season. They picked him up from Jacksonville. And Ray Rice, that hip that's been an issue since week two against Cleveland is starting to heal. They expect he may have a good game, and here he goes. It's Rice inside the 40. Rice inside the 20. Shakes off the tackle and is out of bounds. What a good job by the offensive line. And it's when you look at the left side, it's Shipley and Monroe to get the blocks. This is what they're hoping for, an offense that can play without the stress today. Run the football some. Protect Joe Flacco. And how about that, Jim? You say Ray Rice feeling better. Sometimes you look better when you finally get a running lane to show your talent and get it done. His previous long run of the season had been 14. That went for 47. Sets up a first and goal at the 10. Back to Rice, looking for something to open up. Nothing there. And this time, stop for no gain. Yeah, you, you look at this defense for the Chicago Bears. So many starters out. The defensive line speed up. Lance Briggs is out now. Tillman, he's out. So, so many stars are their marquee players are out. Hard to do a lot on the defensive side, except be very careful so you don't make the mental mistakes. You saw Tillman for a brief moment on the sideline. Second and goal. And Flacco's got the protection. And back to the end zone. And flag is out. And Dixon made the catch out of bounds, but looks like a flag's coming against Chris Conti of Chicago. Pass interference. Defense number 47. Foul occurs in the end zone by rule. The ball will be placed on the one-yard line. First down. Chris Conti's in great position to cover Dixon. Doesn't have to worry, but it takes so long, I'm sure he goes, when is that football going to get here? And it makes you kind of panic, and that's what he does. And it's an easy no, it's an easy call, of course, for the officials. First and goal for the Ravens. Ja Reed comes in on that line and is eligible receiver. And it's Rice spinning. And he slides across, but he was on the ground first. Still at the one. That first run of the game, I looked up and I thought, man, we're back at that playoff game. A handful of years ago at New England when he took the first play of the game, 83 yards for a touchdown. And remember scored. that? Yes, I do remember that. And confidence is such a big thing to NFL players. That gives Ray Rice confidence. It gives the coaches that. And of course, it fires up the offensive line. On second ago, the fake to Rice and rolling out Flacco. Looks and throws and tried to hit Pitt up. And it started uh, Dennis Clark who had Pitt on the brain because he may be coming back soon and is such a favorite target. But it's Dallas Clark who had his hands on it for a moment. It's a national pass. What I mean by that, everybody in the NFL runs this play action fake down the goal line. I thought he had the number one throw, Tavante Leach, in the flat right away, but he didn't feel comfortable. Don't take a chance like that on second down this close to the goal line. Very close, but third and goal it is. And Rice, look at that lane. Touchdown, Baltimore. 
Boy, they cleared out that side, didn't they? They sure did, and that's what they want to do. I know it's on the goal line, but they feel like they can run outside. We saw it on the first play off the left tackle. This time the defense is compressed. Nice, patient play. Oh, my gosh. How about that block Shipley? by Shipley? He is Goodness. A, that's a, what a start for an offensive lineman. Shipley, two tremendous blocks. So, first touchdown. For the Ravens on the ground in five games. And that brings out Tucker. And it's 7-0. The visitors. Rice set the pace on that very first play. Bursting three for 47. And then gets the touchdown. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. And by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. It's been 11 games since Baltimore had an opening drive touchdown. It had been over 100 rush attempts since they had broken one for over 20 yards. And we told you it had been over five games since they had a rush touchdown. So they put a lot of things together. And then Tucker sends it to the back of the end zone. That first series, what did you see out of McCown and the Bears? Whoa, some uncertainty, that's for sure. Not the way you want to start. The shotgun snap, maybe it slipped out of Garza's hand. And then, uh-oh, the runner, the wide receiver is inside blocking. And then a safe throw, which is what you want to do. Going into the win. Lower your expectations as a quarterback. When you're in positions like uh, Josh McCown is right now, thrown into the wind against a good defense, be extremely careful. You might miss somebody that's open, but just don't make that mistake early in the game. First down, shotgun. Waiting for that to unfold, it's Forte for about three, and just to keep you posted again on all this severe weather, it's battering the state of Illinois and already a tornado sighting or two southwest of the city of Chicago. And the NFL is monitoring this situation very closely about possible stoppage of play here. Tornado warnings are in the area. And uh, as uh, our WBBM meteorologist termed it, they're moving at expressway speed, about 60 miles an hour, these uh, storm cells. Second and seven. And there's a ball on the ground. Jeffrey, I thought, might have had the catch. And they're going to have it as a catch and then down at the 30 for a first. We'll find out. Good safe throw. Now let's remember if he caught that football and then fumbled it when he hit the ground, maybe there was not contact. Well, there is contact, and he did fumble. Absolutely. I got the challenge flag out. Ravens are going to challenge it. The big question, do we, is there direct evidence? Chicago is challenging ruling on the field of a catch. Down by contact. Timeout. All right, Ravens. Issue the challenge. And already up 7-0. We know this as we wait for the result of John Harbaugh's challenge that the ruling on the field will not be the right ruling. It was ruled a catch and down. Is it a bang-bang play? Uh, yes, it is. But here's what happens where it could change. He now has possession, and his move, a football move, is to go to the ground. Even though it happened so fast, that move by Jeffrey going to the ground could make it a fumble and a recovery by the Baltimore Ravens. Jim, if he was going across the field and it happened at that same speed where he was going to run with it, I think it would be an incomplete pass. So that's really what it boils down to. It'll either be an incompletion or it'll be a catch with a fumble and recovery by Baltimore. That's right. The ruling on the field, the catch and down by contact, and what would have been a Bears first down is not going to be the end result. And here's Gene Steratore. After review, the ruling is an incomplete pass. 
The receiver did not maintain, maintain possession through the process of the catch. The ball is incomplete. It will be Chicago's ball, third down and seven from the 23-yard line. The ball will be placed in the middle of the field. Baltimore will not be charged a timeout. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to nine minutes, 17 seconds. 9.17 on the game clock, please. And it'll set up a third and seven, so the Ravens do not lose their timeout. Because the end result, they get the incompletion out of it. But a very good quick challenge by John Harbaugh. Uh, that could just turn the game around completely, of course, if that football went the Ravens' way. Ben now a throwing down into what most of the time is into a very stiff breeze, but the winds are swirling inside the stadium. So it varies. Here's McCown. Oh, did you see that football? Somehow it was caught. He got hit by Chris Canty on the release. The completion to Earl Bennett for one and that'll bring out the punting unit. The football going towards the sideline was right at us, and I saw it move two feet. I couldn't tell. It was a slider that turned into a curve, and that was a heck of a catch. Like your old pitching day, Jim Nance. Yeah, I had that curve one. Curve ball in slider. The repertoire. And then every once in a while, you just gave him the heat. <laughs> Potlish, his first punt, was uh, knocked down by the wall of wind on about 35. And again, tricky on the snap. There is Jacoby Jones, this time, fielding it. And he is twisted down at the 26-yard line. It was the backup running back, Michael Ford, who held him to only a two-yard run back after a 51-yard run. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-in-one Xbox One. Jump ahead. And by Aflac. When you're sick or hurt, Aflac pays you cash. Find out more at Aflac.com. Give you a little idea of what these quarterbacks are facing today. First and ten. And Flacco to Dixon. And it slides off his fingertips. Should have had it. Mel Tucker is the defensive coordinator for the Bears. There's Julius Peppers in the 12th year of a very decorated career. Bostic is a rookie starter out of Florida, drafted in the second round. And Bowman starts for Charles Tillman. As we mentioned earlier, Tillman with a tricep injury on IR, but could possibly return if the Bears advance deep into the playoffs. Designated to return. Second and ten. Slides off the hip and comes close to another 10 yards. Corey Wooten wraps him up. We'll give him eight with that. Been uh, a tough year for Rice. Uh, 1,600 scrimmage yards last year. He's on pace for about 800 at the moment. But again, a lot of that has to do with the hip injury that was suffered the second week of the season. And Coach Harbaugh last night when we met with him felt like that this offensive unit and Rice could be close to breakout performances. Because these are not ideal conditions for any offense to break out, but third and two. What a catch. That's Dallas Clark, and that's his 500th career catch. He's taking that football to the sideline to keep it. I don't blame him. That's a nice one, too. Wasn't no little hitch over the middle. He reaches out, a little holding by Conti. Joe Flacco just rips it down the middle. Good catch. You know, you talked about Ray Rice. He just didn't all of a sudden this offense, uh, this offseason, just turn into a bad running back. The same with Joe Flacco. Offensive lines, if you give these guys a chance and opportunities, they'll get it done. Pierce, in and running back, and his numbers have dropped significantly as well as he's been hampered by a hamstring issue as you look at the latest radar and there's Chicago right there in case you can't see it on the map and it looks like we're about right in the middle of it now or getting ready to get yeah, the, the heavier stuff appears to be just a few minutes away I was playing weatherman today in the pregame show yeah, yeah so I that. enjoyed it yeah we got something for you to do off season <laughs> second and seven oh! and there could be contact there and the flag comes out on Bowman as Torrey Smith was the target. Number 
There are multiple fouls on the play. Offside defense, number 97, that penalty is declined. Also pass interference defense, number 38, spot foul, automatic first down. Couple things they'd like to do today. We've seen the run game already for the Ravens, but when I look at this offense, Jill Flacco is a great quick rhythm short thrower. Why? His arm, his height, he can do it with so little effort, and I, I think they should do more of it. Let him get rid of the football, then every once in a while, let him hold on it, hold on to it, and rip it down the field. He's got another completion, and that goes to Torrey Smith. Two pass interference calls against the Bears defense already. Dallas Clark, just a few moments ago, extended this drive again with his 500th catch. He's the ninth all-time tight end leader in receptions. Of course, he had a number of really good years at Indianapolis, including one year where he caught over 100 balls from Peyton Manning. Second and six. And Pierce, this time, is going to be shoved out of bounds by Bowman and set back about five yards. That was a loss of four. Fantasy football fans get a fresh start with player challenge. Four-week game that includes big cash prizes. See all the rules and sign up at cbssports.com slash challenge. Third and 11. Rice returns to the backfield. Blanco in trouble, unloads it. And Rice with that wiggle or two may have brought field goal into play here. Picks up four. Interesting play. Do you go for it on fourth? Do you punt it? Or do you go for the field goal? This, The wind is swirling, Jim. But I saw the place kickers try them in this direction from over 60 yards. They were getting the distance, getting the distance very easily. 52, and they're going to go for the field goal. 52 yards for Justin Tucker, who won it last week in overtime against Cincinnati. His second game-winning field goal of the year. Hit one through down at Miami as well. He's never missed on the road from beyond 50. From 52. The kick is good. Mm. How about that? Seven for seven in his career on the road from beyond 50. He's been working on, like last year, take the curve out of the football. That went straight the whole way. 10-0 Baltimore. Well, during that break, they just made an announcement, plus they put it up on the screen here for all to see to please clear the stadium seating area. Gene Steratore is talking right now to Gary Slaughter, who is the NFL observer up in the press box. And, of course, there's also communication between Mr. Slaughter up in the press box here and the league headquarters back in New York. The players are still on the field. Well, and the fans are not, like, running for the exits here. They're all sitting around because I think there's, they're going, well, the players are still on the field. Why are we being asked to move out of our seats? And they're making another announcement now to please clear the seating area calmly and relocate. available to you, fans, so please. Go to the nearest covered concourse area. Everyone Looking for the must nearest leave their coverage concourse Again, area. Precautionary Just precautionary right, right now. Leave the seating area because of that weather system we've been monitoring from I the start. Keep you informed as to any further details. Thank you. Well, the Ravens, Jim, they're used to a little stoppage in play. So they had it in the Super Bowl, opening game of the year, and here now. I think you're right, though, with the players still kind of just uh, hanging around the sideline area. It sends a very mixed message to the to the fans in the stands.
because we really don't have a lightning delay either. Yeah. This is the dangerous weather band that we've been watching over the last couple of hours. It was 150 miles southwest of Chicago when we first received reports that there had been a tornado sighting. And this area then was elevated from a tornado watch to a tornado warning. Due to the inclement weather, the game will be temporarily suspended. So everybody's heading in now. Both are dark and ominous clouds hovering over Soldier Field. dark here all day but even since kickoff though it has uh, really darkened up here at Soldier Field yeah it's like a movie when you look out there and you see the clouds and how you even said to us is it getting, getting darker here and the answer is yes Now they've asked some of our uh, on-field camera operators to also head for cover underneath. Well, you mentioned about the Ravens and dealing with delays. We were there in New Orleans back on February the 2nd when the lights went out in the third quarter. 34 minutes, that delay lasted. And then the week one lightning delay at Denver. And that delay also was 34 minutes long. And while play has been suspended here in Chicago, we're going to hand it back to our studio in New York. Send it back to you, James Brown. All right, JB, and it's going to be at about two hours total length of the delay once we get play started. The back warming up on the field. Yes, blue skies now dominating as these weather systems have moved through. And uh, completely different look here. Bright sunshine. The temperatures dropped about uh, 11 degrees since uh, kickoff. Uh, this cold front coming through the area. And we're ready for a resumption of play here shortly. We'll be resuming with the Ravens in front 10 nothing after their first possession going down the field behind Rice. Ray Rice's 47 yard run, then one yard touchdown plunge. Here's a look back at it, and later a field goal from 52 yards by Tucker. This was their first snap today, the Ravens that is, and it was Rice breaking it down to a goal to go situation. They scored from the yard out with Rice, and then Tucker. That was the last play before they suspended play here and asked everyone to run for cover on the concourse levels here. So here are some of the early game stats. It's much chillier. The sun is out. A completely different day is upon us, Phil Sims. And we're getting ready to restart this game with, again, Baltimore kicking off to Chicago on the heels of a field goal some two hours ago. Uh, yeah, it was humid. It's not humid anymore, that's for sure. The temperature has dropped. I think when you talk about adjustments, what does this do to the football teams? I think the players can handle it. They're pros. They're used to going out to practice, taking breaks, and going out and practicing again. I think the big thing is, how's the field? There was a lot of rain that came down during this break. These are some big men down there, and will that field be, allow them to run, to cut, 
and still perform like uh, we all hope they can. No, I think it's going to be a significant issue here. He even saw a couple of the kickers. I saw Tucker warming up uh, and try to adjust to the slippery conditions, and he nearly, nearly fell down on his first field goal attempt from about 30 yards. Well, when you have that, people slipping, wide receivers, linemen falling down, quarterback get, getting hit, there's a lot of, uh, of course, issues that can come up with that. It's Robbie Gold of the Bears. And again, the team's going back through a warm-up. I mean, how much time do you really need after what's going to uh, amount to two hours? I mean, they were saying 10 minutes. That doesn't sound like enough. Yeah, no, it's plenty, Jim, because they're all in the locker room stretching, getting ready to come back out. They're doing, you know, you can jump, run in the hallways a little bit. And these players, I, I always say that they can adjust. They're used to adversity. That's what practice is for them every single day. They go for a while. They stop for long periods. Not like this, but uh, I, I think they'll adjust physically very well. Here's another closer inspection of Ooh. the field. Test this drainage system here, that's for sure. And before this game entered the delay, it was some start by the Baltimore Ravens here, wasn't it? It, it really was. And you, we, we talked about it early in the game, but real quick, you go over that start. This was a good chance for the Ravens to really get their offense going. Why? Because the Chicago Bears defense is not a blitzing defense, and they have some rookies starting on the defensive side, a lot of injuries. So an offensive line that has question marks with the Baltimore Ravens, give Joe Flacco some time. Ray Rice getting to run the football. Man, the karma is all good right now for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to commend uh, the entire staff here at Soldier Field, and again, Gary Slaughter, who was here kind of manning things, and being the intermediary between the league office in New York. Mr. Slaughter is the NFL supervisor of officials, and he had, of course, a direct line as well down to the field with Gene Steratore. But then the execution of getting some 60,000 people without a panic, without a hint of it, and get them to a safe area, very well done here in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Fans were cooperative. The hardest thing was... There were so many people hitting the exits, it took quite a while for them to get down the, you know, the walkway so they could get underneath the stadium. So I mentioned this cold front has gone through, so the temperature is dropping, and we still have strong, gusty winds. So again, it'll be Justin Tucker and the Ravens kicking off. And this is backing up uh, the field goal that Tucker made some two hours ago. You know, during that delay, you get so many different estimates at one time. They were talking about 30 to 40 minutes. It got stretched to an hour. At one point, somebody even had told us it might be up to three hours before they're prepared to play. But we're going to be inside of two hours once this ball is launched into the air. One hour and 55 minutes later. And an off-balance kick. Squid down to about the 28. And that's Dante Rosario, who also slips. And we're going to see, I suspect, a whole lot of this mm. as McCown and the Bears offense come out onto the field. That was Tucker on the kick. Look at Rosario trying to get a clean hold of it. Hey everybody testing the field right away on that kick. So here come for their third series of the day. Over two hours since their last snap. The Bears from the 33 with McCown. Looking down the field, and that pass behind his receiver, Brandon Marshall. Talk about receivers. They're going to slip when they try to make quick adjustments to the football or running their routes, but also, Jim, defensive linemen. This just kills the pass rush. Good job on McCown finding the second receiver. Look at those, what do you want to say, divots? 
big pieces aside, are coming up in the middle of the field. Yeah. Ladies. We got Second and ten, Forte. His first carry of the day went for 15 yards. A long time ago, this one is good for three. You keep talking, will anything change? Will game plans change in the locker room with this? I think right away, the Chicago Bears worried about just dropping back and throwing the football because of the power rush of the Baltimore Ravens. I think that can change now. With this field, you would hope no quick moves. Offensive linemen should be able to handle the pass rush. It's a third and six. Sucks coming in, passed. Gotten away in time because Suggs was coming after the quarterback. Forte was the receiver. Suggs number 55. Boy, that's a pretty good takeoff on the outside. Jermon Bushrod, what happens anytime you play some pass rushers who have success, you're worried about the speed to the outside, and Terrell Suggs, good job going inside that time and ruining the play. Adam Podlish to punt for the third time, and again, watch his footing. He's a two-step punter, which is a good thing today for sure. And Doss runs away from it as it bounces out at the 20. 43-yard punt. Well, here are the official links. Becoming old hat for the Ravens. Going back to New Orleans and the Super Bowl blackout. And then the thunderstorms before kickoff in Denver. And then the one today. They're now they're saying 153. Well, I know this. The one guy it's not going to bother is Joe Flacco because the name Joe Cool really does suit him well. He doesn't stress over anything. High winds, rain today. Goes well. Whatever. I'm not worried about it. Here's Flacco completing the pass to Torrey Smith for five before two Bears hammer him, including Bowman. You know, you talk about Flacco trying to get this football team, trying to get this offense centered around him because it is about Joe Flacco. They paid him, but he's the best talent they have out there, Jim, and you've got to find ways to let him show it off. And they're off to a good start, some quick passes, help the offensive line, and, of course, give confidence to the quarterback and receivers. They have two backup receivers inactive today because of injury. Brandon Stokely and Marlon Brown are both out. So they brought Doss in the slot to the right on this play, second and five. Second option, and it's Dixon who has it for the first down across the 40. Ed love Dixon it. for 16. Yeah, I love that read. Anytime you see a quarterback, I like this, when you look to the right and you have time to look out there and say, let me rotate to the other side and find a wide open tight end. Well, that's a good job. If you don't want to slip, then don't lean. Keep your feet underneath your shoulders. That's very important for pass receivers. Six completions on the game for Flacco to five different receivers. On first down, the draw to Rice, and he'll carry a couple of Browns with the Bears with him for a gain of five. And Ray Rice, again, just an explosive start here. 47 yards on his first handle and later a touchdown. And even that run right there, had a couple of bears on him, and he was able to carry him with him for a gain of five. He's up to 60 yards on six attempts. The NFL, everything complements some other form of your offense or defense. You protect Joe Flacco, he throws the football, makes it easier for Ray Rice to run. Fake to Rice, and up the middle, and almost intercepted. Dixon had his hands on it. And then off the deflection, Conti had a play on the pick. Well, what you want to do, thats I like this. Every team runs this play now. It's a fake the guy going across the zone read. Here he goes up the seam. And Joe Flacco just kind of dips under the football. And it sails just a couple feet too high. That's why it was incomplete. And there's still gusty winds. And they're going downwind right now. So that's when they'll sail with the wind and movement and flags and a stoppage. Again, Gene Sterator in control of this officiating crew. Neutral zone infraction defense number 98 was in the neutral zone causing the offense to fall start. Five yard penalty, still third down. 
Corey Wooten went to Northwestern. Don Bosco Prep High School in New Jersey. You know him well. Tight end and a defensive end in high school. Defensive end, of course, in college. And starting here, and has really just improved every single year with the Bears. Rick Wagner comes on the Ravens offensive line here. He's a rookie from Wisconsin. Third and one. And Rice. Well, like he got a couple to move in the chains. Yeah, it's always strategic, Jim, when you run those short yardage plays. You and I talk about it a lot, how hard they are to get. But the Bears just kept the defense spread nice and even. So there's a double team inside. And Ray Rice, boy, a lot of good blockings. Uh, a block, blocks here. Grakowski at center once again. Good block led the way. From the 49 of Chicago, Rocco. It's away from the heat and slides for a gain of five. Maybe four. We don't give enough credit. Joe Flacco this time. When you play him, they get out of the rush lanes. And he is such a much better athlete than people realize. But feet first, that means right away you're giving yourself up. And defenders cannot hit you. Boy, he slid for about three or four yards, didn't he? Yeah, I thought he was back in high school playing baseball. Second and six. Rice. He's hit right away. Julius Peppers for a loss of one. Well, he tries to cut back this time, Ray Rice, but it is really well done. Watch his feet. Oh, see, he got that foot way outside his body, and you're going to dig up some turf and slow you down, but nice job the backside of the defense being disciplined. Dallas Clark comes in to the Ravens on a wing to the left. Bernard Pierce is the running back, and there's Clark shifting around. Third and seven. Rocco. Puck back a couple of times. Takes off for the first, and he's got it at the 35 to close out the first quarter. Took a while to play that first quarter, didn't it? They'll have a new set of downs when we come back. 10-0 after one Baltimore, and you're watching the NFL on CBS. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, back here at Soldier Field. And coming out of a Flacco scramble for a first that picked up 11 yards. They hurried to the line to get that play off before the end of the quarter. Now with a first down run, it's Pierce. And he picks up four. By the way, on the commercial break, as yep. the teams exchange sides, it's like, uh, you're, you're a polo guy, what do they call it? <laughs> yeah. Stomping out the divots between the chuckers, is yeah. that what it is? I sure look like a polo guy, yeah, don't I? Too. I act like one, yeah. <laughs> Second and six. From the 31 of the Bears. And a flag is down as Flacco goes to the safety valve, Pierce, for no gain. Holding. Offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. So let's talk a little bit more about this Ravens offense that sure. has been pretty stagnant through the first nine games. Changes on the offensive line. Of course, you'll lose big part of it. Bolden in the offseason. He goes to San Francisco. They trade him. And then you have the Pitta injury oh, in him. camp, which was, of course, one of Flacco's favorite targets. Then you have the injuries to the two running backs as they play through it. The offensive line changes. What it does... The fact that you lose a receiver, now it makes it harder for other receivers to get open because the focus is not on Antoine Bolden. Here comes Peppers, and he gets to Flacco at the 50. Just his third sack of the year, Julius Peppers, who was slow to get up uh, at the end of the first quarter. 
Thought he might have been hurt, but showed explosion getting to the quarterback that time. Speed and power, he did both that time to Eugene Monroe. And they, look, they made no bones about it. Outside, they got to get some pressure going against the tackles of the Baltimore Ravens. Peppers, practicing very little, rested up, got it done that time. Third and 24, over the head of Rice. Well, that'll get the crowd that woke them up and it really stopped the drive by the Ravens. They were methodically just doing what they wanted to. It kind of, when you're a Ravens fan, you're going, uh-oh, here we go again. They start out protecting the quarterback and it seems to get worse as the game goes along. And that sack took them out of field goal range. They'd already had a 52-yard make by Tucker in the first quarter long ago. Here comes Sam Cook now to punt it with Hester back. And it bounces into the end zone, but there is a flag. Forty-nine yard punt with just a little too much on it for Cook. During the kick, legal use of hands, hands to the face, return team number 38. Is all of the punt was a touchback. The penalty will be enforced from the 20 yard line back to the 10. First down, Chicago. Timeout. The Bears defense riddled with injuries, but Peppers wakes them up with the sack of Flacco. 10 0 Ravens. Ravens have picked up. Well, you see, Ravens have run more plays than the Bears Ready. have picked up yardage. This is their fourth series of the game. Chicago with Forte. He's got 10. 15, give him 20. Running behind Martellus Bennett. And now a flag near the area where he was tackled. Could be a horse collar. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Number 32 defense, 15-yard penalty after the end of the run, first down. First off, really good blocking up front. You said it, Martellus Bennett, really have a terrific year. James Ehedebo pulls him down from behind. It doesn't matter if you pull him backwards or forwards now, that is a penalty. And that's a good call because we've seen so many guys get hurt. That was Ladarius Webb, I'm sorry, who made the... Penalty. Lady. From the 45. Yeah. And another two for Forte. Brought down by D'Angelo Tyson. Forte really likes this offense that Mark Trestman has brought to Chicago, Phil. Well, he does because it's uh, all running backs would love this offense. Kind of started from the philosophy of Bill Walsh in San Francisco with Roger Craig. Run the football, catch the football out of the backfield, line up as a wide receiver. And Matt Forte, very talented, he gets to show all those skills off. Second down to Bennett. And he is tripped up by Matt Elam. And again, let's go back since it's been so long. Josh McCown, we talked about him way back when, when this game started. And he's getting a second start of the season as Jay Cutler is inactive. And there's Jay out with uh, now an ankle injury and, of course, had been dealing with a groin injury. He's wearing a boot on that uh, left foot. But McCown has been some kind of support system for the starter, Cutler. And he's also been quite a, a boost for the Bears when he's played. He's played well. Pace is third and three. Hits the target. For the first down, he's got Marshall. And I'm wondering in these slippery conditions, does it favor the offense or the defense? Oh, I think it, it favors the wide receivers going down the field. Marshall that time doesn't even really make a real sharp, sharp cut. But the protection allows Josh McCown that extra time to wait for that big cut down the field. Nice job. 13 to Marshall. These wide receivers, Marshall, Jeffrey, 
very big. John Harbaugh, I like what he said. Even when you cover them, it doesn't matter. They're so big, you just throw it up to them, they still make the catch. Marshall's numbers since joining the Bears last year are just huge. Here's the end of rounds to the other wide out, Jeffrey. And he's got a first down running behind Rosario. It's something they like to do with Jeffrey. It's the 10th time this year they've let him run the football. This goes for 11. Here he comes around, watch the block. It's pretty simple. They love this. When you want to make sure a defense stays disciplined, it's one of the core plays of Mark Trustman and people who like this style of offense. The West Coast offense reverses, keep the defense honest. From the 24. Seal the pocket. The tackle hits the target. And it's Jeffrey on the receiving end this time. And he sets him up with a first and goal with a six. McCown is so good with his eyes. Watch him look. He's going to look one way, and then he turns, knows the hole for the receiver is going to be inside, and puts it right on the money. We've got an injured Raven. It's the heady bow. And we'll step aside for just a moment. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. State Farm. It pays to dabble check. Talk to your agent today. And by Bose, the official home audio sponsor of the NFL. We're back with the Bears set up at the six-yard line. First and goal to go. This drive started back at their own 10. The Hedebo was uh, injured on this last throw to Jeffrey. He's been replaced by Jeremy Miles. Makes the hit, the head, he tries to get it to the side, doesn't make it. But these receivers, Chicago Bears, you look at this offense, they got this offensive line in order, they've got the running back, they got the wide receivers, and the quarterback. The Ravens, the only defense in the league not to allow a touchdown drive longer than 80 yards. The Chicago would like to finish one off that would go for 90. They got a first and goal at the six. McCown to the end zone and knocked down. Corey Graham on the coverage. And how many times did we see him practice this play on Friday out at the facility in Lake Forest? We saw it a lot. It is this exact same position, back right corner of the end zone, actually going the same way on the practice field. A lot of hand fighting on the outside. That's a good no call. What a play by Graham. Looks back, finds the football, and knocks it down. That's why there was no penalty. Graham, who was a fifth-round pick by the Bears back in 2007, played five years for him. Second and goal. Forte. Able to take it close to the three. And into the arms of Terrence Cody. But the one thing I've noticed, and I know it's a quick judgment here, but this Baltimore Ravens defense, when they play tight man coverage, they did against the Bengals, they were terrific. Today, maybe it's the field, but they have backed off the receivers. They're playing zone. They're letting them run down the field. And we've seen they're big, and you let these guys run down the in the middle of these zones, pretty easy to hit them. Ehedebo is back in for the Baltimore defense. And a timeout is called by the Ravens. John Harbaugh running down the field to call that timeout. Not as quick as I saw him last year. We know there's slippery conditions here now. No, so he, okay, okay yeah. kept his feet underneath gotta get, him. Gotta there get, you go. Gotta get the footing. Thursday on CBS, Sherlock Holmes is on the case. And you can see why critics say elementary is so good it's great. And that's Thursday at 10, 9 central. Only CBS. Really impressive drive, though by the Bears blocking Martellus Bennett. I left him out. Listen, he has been some pickup by this football team. He's a giant at the tight end position. He has gotten better at blocking, and what a target to throw the football to. They line up Bennett in the backfield, as well as Forte, on third and goal. The count to the end zone, and knocked down by Jimmy Smith, but a flag. 
Jeffrey was the Bears receiver. Run to the pass, holding defense number 22. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And it's called on Jimmy Smith. Jim, you could hear the wind that time in uh, the, oh, the microphone. Yeah, Sarah I thought it, mic. I thought it died, but it had not. What a blitz pick up by the Bears. They are one of the best in the NFL. They don't let guys run free at the quarterback. Gives the quarterback confidence. Oh. McCown stood in there what? and got the penalty. Bears have not Ready? had a rush touchdown at home since week Fire. one against Cincinnati. They're going to go up top, and it's incomplete. And again, it's Jimmy Smith defending as Marshall was trying to grab hold of what would have been his ninth touchdown of the year. Well, you know, that's a good no call. It is. He didn't impede the progress of the wide receiver, didn't pull him. I know it was tight. And listen, that tight, when you're down this close to the goal line, Usually you see outside throws. That was inside. Jimmy Smith, good job being ready for it. So the ball is at the two. This is the tenth play of a drive again that began back at the other ten. A second and goal. Pass incomplete. Going for the fullback. The Ameta. He hit a bolt. Back, is back in the lineup. Sprint right option. Something like it comes out of the backfield. Hit the receiver quick out in the flat. The problem is that receiver is a fullback. And he had a bow who was shaken up and missed a couple of plays. Was the one defending right there. So third and goal. They've gone up top twice. And they do again to the end zone. And Jimmy Smith had the perfect position on Marshall. He did. You said it. It was perfect. He did not take his eyes off the quarterback. And McCown's trying to throw it before the defensive back looks. Well, that's an unbelievable job not slipping, too, Jim. The big divot comes up. But that was extremely well played by Jimmy Smith. The Ravens, the one thing they've done better here of late, the defensive backs are playing the football when it's in the air very well. Robbie Gold, one of the best. Back third all-time field goal percentage at 86%. 16 to 17 on the year. This from 20. And chips it through. Replaces his divot. Marshall targeted a couple of times, but unable to take it home. The NFL on CBS back here in Chicago where the Ravens defense stiffens up after Chicago drove it into a first and goal to go situation from the six actually had five snaps from inside the seven yard line but only managed the field goal running it out is Jacoby Jones he slips a bit and then falls after contact at the 28 where he's hit by Blake Costanzo 33 yard run back yeah, Joe Flacco, so underrated as an athlete, and everybody just thinks, oh, he's a big, tall quarterback, not going to move around, and he's excellent in the pocket, and you force him to go outside and pick up yards with his legs, he will. How about that? Looking for guys downfield and finally decides to pick up those legs. Jim, we saw him make so many big scrambles in the Super Bowl. Doesn't get enough credit for all the good he does with his legs. On first down. The rookie out of Missouri Western State, David Bass, timed it perfectly, made the grab and took off 22 yards to the end zone. He sure did. He timed it perfectly. He was a great drive starter, but you must go in there and hit him. The fact that he had time to protect himself, he jumped and made the interception. This is 
is something they do so well. Since the start of last year, they have now had 12 interception returns for touchdowns. The Bears' defense got another one today to tie the game at 10. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Chicago, 10 points in 12 seconds. Well, it's never easy for the Ravens. We know that, Jim. And it's never been easy this year. Just last week, of course, that says it all. When you give up a Hail Mary to tie the game and take it into overtime. But it's, it's kind of the way the league is. Hard to dominate for any long stretches of the game. Just so many good players. And what a play by Bass. That was... Terrific. You can see how athletic he is. Bass, who was in uh, camp this year at Carolina, they waved him. We'll have to re tee this one. And then Chicago, they had scouted him, liked him, brought him in, and he's making plays. Now they got to hold the football because that's the second time it's blown off the tee. The second time, then you must have a holder in there to make sure it doesn't happen again. How about 12 interception returns That's a by the Bears defense since the start of the Kobe Jones will not touch that one. Out to the 20. Well, I think the key is this is a great drive starter. Full back in the flat. Everybody runs it. But just watch Ray Rice. When he goes to make the block, he tries to cut him. And because he does it so early... Bass doesn't even have to really protect himself. Now he can watch the quarterback, and that's what causes the interception. And, you know, also give Joe Flacco blame. You can't you can't throw passes like that and cut it close. you got to give it about a foot more than you think to make sure it doesn't get tipped. Pierce stacked up and a loss of one. And just like what happened in New Orleans after the delay, the momentum changed after play resumed. Well, it sure has here. I was wondering if the crowd, quite a few people, a few empty seats, but they have stayed. And You know, the crowd always wants you to get them excited, and the Bears have done that here these last two possessions. Second and 11. And Flacco goes right side. That is Tim Jennings hammering Ray Rice after a catch for two. That's pitcher per perfect tackle. Comes in, arms are wide, right to the midsection. Oh my gosh, head to the side. Put it on tape and show everybody how to do it. Tim Jennings, a pro bowler. A year ago, a season in which he had nine interceptions. He's added three more this year, including a couple of runbacks for touchdowns. Third and nine. Flacco dumps it off. Knows where to go for that first down. He's got it with ease. Got to tell the two defensive tackles on this defense, stay inside. Watch the pressure outside. Joe Flacco steps up. Nobody in the middle at all. Play goes for 12 and a first. Rice has 77 total yards in this game. And the Ravens touchdown. Go back to Pierce in the backfield. Downfield. Well catch. That's Tandon Doss. And it's confirmed. Near the 50. Gain of 16. Yeah, Jim, beautiful throw. High protected. The interception, both feet down. What a catch by Tandon Doss. I think Joe Flacco is right. Doesn't worry about the weather. The wind's been whipping around. I'm watching the referees. All their, the pants are blowing around. And that was a beautiful spiral. Thrown over the top and dropped it right in there. Flacco's sixth different receiver in this game. Giving him a first down at the 49. And that's Pierce.
Pierce with a nice cut running behind Marshall Yanda for seven. I want to get back to this point you made some three hours ago when the game was about to commence about how important this game is you feel for both teams. Oh, it, it is absolutely. Keep the momentum and, and stay in the race in the AFC North for the Baltimore Ravens and of course the NFC North you're going to have to win a lot of games down the stretch to win that division. Flag as Rocco will scramble again and slide with Peppers by his side and that might draw another flag. It does. As Flacco has given himself up and Flacco still made contact. Peppers made contact. There are multiple fouls on the defense. Offside, number 97, penalty decline. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Late hit on a sliding quarterback. Defense number 90, 15 yards, first down. Another good job by Joe Flacco. Good change up on the snap count, but once the quarterback gives himself up, feet first, you can't even slide down there. Look, I know it was nothing, but you can't start going, oh, well, he didn't hit him hard. Was it easy? When you make the attempt like that and get close to the quarterback, they have to throw the flag. So that's a good call on the field. First down from the 25. Flacco completes this one. To Torrey Smith sliding across the middle for another 14. Beautiful throw and catch, and I like this too. You want to get receivers down the field? What you do is you stack them. You saw Tien and Dawes come behind, and when you get two stacked receivers, defensive backs immediately are going to do what? Back off, easy to throw and catch once you do that. Joe Flacco has now gone over 20,000 passing yards in his career in this game today. Up with these early throws as Rice takes it down to about the five. Boy, got hit by his own guy as hard as anything, but Jim, this offensive line, muddy field, not great footing, and they are firing off the football that time. Grakowski, Yonda just making contact. Marshall Yonda, what a player, right guard. He made great contact with two people. When in doubt, hit whoever's around you. Second and three. To the end zone. And it is caught for a touchdown. Do have a flag, though. Corey Smith with the catch. Hmm. Pass interference. Defense. Number 38, penalty has declined. Result of the play, touchdown. I'm not sure if he caught, changed the play on the outside. Oh, there's the hold, Bowman. They called it that time, but a small window. Flacco fires it through it. Look how big he is. He makes it look so easy. That's a beautiful catch in traffic. So 80 yards. Baltimore travels. After giving up the pick six. Oh, nice snap. Good job by Cook getting it down. Our Cox snapped it back to Cook. Got out of his stance to get it down for Tucker's extra point. Flacco five out of five on the drive. And a touchdown. Watch this athletic play by the punter slash holder. Sam Cook up, down. Falling away because he's off balance. You know, years ago, if you'd have said, what an athletic play by the kicker or punter, I'd go, oh, come on. But now these guys, and, you, and I'm not kidding, they are tremendous athletes. Great hand-eye. They can all run. We see them in on tackles. It's one of the reasons why punters and kickers have, got, have gotten so good in this league. And his efforts uh, allow Tucker to remain unblemished in his short NFL career on extra points. Never missed one in college in Texas either. So, the drive line kick. Hester steps out at about the 26. 28-yard run back. College football, the Home Depot SEC. How do you back up that game yesterday? Georgia and Auburn. What a thriller it was for our crew. Well, they're going to have Texas A&M and LSU. That's how you back it up yeah, right there. Exactly. It all begins. 
Wisconsin. College football today at 3 Eastern. How about that drive by Joe Flacco? You throw an interception, return for a touchdown. Just as cool as he can be, moved, made some good throws, and you and I laugh all the time. Listen, if he ever gets an ulcer, I'll be shocked because <laughs> our man is cool. Jimmy Smith and now a play, game six. Well, the players really, Jim, win is. I can see it. The, the signs on the walls are starting to show the wind, but they're dealing with the field and the conditions extremely well. A lot of very good plays on the offensive side. Again, still breezy, gusting to about 35. Second and four, and McCown here will give it again to Forte, and he stopped at the line, but another flag is out. This Mark Tressman offensive system is something quarterbacks, they love to be a part of. And in Josh McCown's case, he got kind of tipped off by his brother, Luke McCown, who's right. he's back up down on New Orleans. You are going to love this system in playing for this coach. And, and I Holding think Josh McCown. Offense, number 15, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Sorry, didn't mean to talk about but I think he found out all the years he's been in the league, all the different systems. Uh, every year but one, he's had a different offensive coordinator. But... He said to us, what, I'm more mature now, I can really appreciate what we're doing here. And he goes, my gosh, the system, it is real. It, it, it allows the quarterback freedom. It's very, very fine-tuned. And he says, I'm mature enough now to make this thing work. Came in the league back in 02 with the Arizona Cardinals. This is his 35th career start today. And that's a false start against the Bears. Ball start, offense, number 83, five-yard penalty, second down. Seventh penalty against Chicago. This is, again, the fifth team for Josh and Luke McCown's on his fifth team down uh, in New Orleans, again, playing behind Drew Brees. You can look at that a lot of ways. You know what it tells me? They got some talent. They're able to hang in there. I think it's pretty evident when you see either one of them play, they can throw and they're both good athletes. It's Arizona, Detroit, Oakland, Carolina, and Chicago for the quarterback who takes it out of the gun on second and 19. Jose with a nice juke. Pick up a couple of extra yards, and Chris Canny finishes him off, gain of nine. Jim, I saw Josh McCown play in 2005 down in Mexico. He's with the Arizona Cardinals against the San Francisco 49ers. I went, my gosh, this guy's got a chance to be a star. But you got to hit the right opportunity at the right time. So when you're uh, under-publicized or a draft pick, it didn't fall for him, but he's making up for it now. He's going to have a third and ten coming out of the two-minute warning. 17-10, Baltimore. You're watching the NFL on CBS. There you see the timeouts. Two for the Ravens. Two minutes to go. And a third and ten for Chicago. So do you run it here try to no no i think didn't mean to cut you off so quick but no i think you throw it try to pick it up because Wait. running it and making them using the timeout is really not going to change a lot for the baltimore offense well mccown yeah, hits marshall and drops it now he was frustrated about not uh mm. catching a touchdown earlier that one should draw a little Frustration as well. Well, the, time. the pass for oh boy, that was some sweet move on the outside, getting away from Corey Graham. Doesn't look like he takes his eyes off of it. He just drops it, but a really good job by the offensive line that time, switching off the pass rush and giving McCown the time. Boy, that is a very big drop here because now instead of a first down, you got to punt it away. Flacco's just driven the Ravens 80 yards. That came very close to touching Asa Jackson. Ball will be snapped coming up here at the 28-yard line after the 47-yard Adam Podlish punt. And Flacco 
Got a nice chance to operate a two-minute offense here with a couple of timeouts. Talking to us last night, he was pretty bold in some of the things he had to say, Phil, about his confidence in this team. Yeah, Joe is, even before they won the Super Bowl, he is not a shrinking violent, that's for sure. He is not shy, tells you what he feels, has great confidence in his team. Pressure and still on his feet. He may have been down. Yep. And they do rule him down. It was not an incompletion. They say he was down. It'll go as a sack. Because he's trying to hang in there to the last second, even after he escaped Julius Peppers, to get that completion before he finally decides to throw it away. So this would change everything. Clock moving. Now you've got to be really careful on what you decide to do with the football. And a flag. And it looks to be a false start. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, second down. Now it turns it all around without question. Now the Chicago Bears are watching the clock. They're going to use their timeouts and let the Ravens punt into the wind. We saw the last punt, Jim, with the wind. Hard to even get it up in the air. And again, the Bears on their side of it have all of their timeouts, all three. That flag, look, it's wrapped around the pole. All you have to do is look at the head referee, Gene Steratore. His pants are flying around there. That wind is strong on the field right now. Drop play. Rice for three. And Peppers, who got credited with the sack on first down and second of the day, is in on that tackle, too. Timeout Chicago with 107. And, I, and if I was the Ravens here... I would probably hand it off again and just take one more time off the board. One more time out. And if I'm the punt returner, I'm going to get back there about 25 yards and daring to punt it over my head. Well, that punt returner just happens to be a guy named Destin Hester, Devin Hester. Yeah, he's pretty good. That's what I hear. 19 career returns and all things in what did John Harbaugh say about Devin Hester he to punt to him? away from punt it out of bounds he didn't hesitate no third and 16 right down the field and it's intercepted that is Bostic the rookie right in front of Dallas Clark and he pulls it down at the 50. it's a beautiful throw uh, it's perfect it's right on target the problem is there's the coverage is great they're playing deep down the field. Even if the interception is not by Bostic, the safeties are both there. That is way too aggressive for that situation. This is Flacco's 13th pass intercepted of the year. He has 13 touchdown passes and the 13 picks a new career high. Mm. You gain 10, you get you get 15 yards, it's absolutely a field goal try. You might not even need 15. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy. This is the 1,300 game in Chicago Bear history. Overload blitz. First down, McCown steps up, hits his man, Marshall, who has hold of it this time at the 37. And again, they have two timeouts. Yeah, no, no use. You're right, Jim. Don't hurry no and make a mistake. That's right. That play good for 13. McCown slips out of the sack. Goes to the ball. And the catch is made by Jeffrey. He's walloped right after grabbing it by Graham. The timeout was called, I think, right? Yes. He was tackled, and I believe he stayed in the field of play. Oh, yeah, he didn't get yeah. out of bounds. you yep. got to call a timeout. Well, he didn't reach for it. I thought I saw a coach on the sideline. And why that doesn't, it, you're not out of bounds, Jim, because he's going backwards and goes out of bounds. So the clock does not stop in those situations. Dressman doesn't agree with it. Well, this is definitely the right call on the field. He's hit, gets out of bounds, but it's he's driven backwards. 
Uh, that that is the call. That's the official way to do it on the field. You're saying forward progress. Forward progress. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes. So you got to know that. You, we I see it five times every game in the NFL. But Luke McCown, he is on. The, I mean Josh McCown. Well, I, th I thought I wouldn't do that today, like doing the hardball game of the Super Bowl, but I did. But he is throwing the football with tremendous accuracy. That's what I've noticed from him in every game he's been in this year. When you watch him, if they're open, he doesn't miss. He's got one timeout left. 25 seconds to go second quarter. Looks it up ahead of Forte, and he skips out of bounds near the 18. That was pretty. I mean, Matt, Matt Forte in the backfield. Now going across the field against Courtney Upshaw, big linebacker, defensive lineman. And what a nice little throw again by McCown. Forte, when I watch him run, I swear I think of Marcus Allen. Just has that gait, makes it look easy, smooth, and covers a lot of ground. Yeah, a glide almost at times. First and ten. And McCown. To the end zone, Manzo Brown, and Bennett's incomplete. The ball hit the ground. There is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Holding offense number 63, 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. So a Bennett catch, had he made it, wouldn't have mattered. That's right, there is a penalty. Do you get the second foot down? Yes. Going to the ground, the football is already coming out. Well, the other thing, this Ravens defense, you've got to have a little talk in that huddle. Hey, this quarterback, he moves around pretty good. Now Both quarterbacks have today. Field goal from here would be about 46 yards, but they have the timeout, so they have another chance to make a play with 10 seconds. But first, timeout Baltimore. That's a good timeout. If I'm the Baltimore Ravens here, I back up, back up and let them get whatever they want in yards. Because if you take a chance, Jim, blitz, pressure the receivers, you give up the big score. And we got to think the kicker for the Chicago Bears doesn't miss too many. They're definitely in field goal range. So I'd play safe defense. As Robbie Gold was made 17 out of 18 on the season, including one today. He's made his last 10 straight field goals at home. And he opened the season week one with his career long 58 yards made on this side at Soldier Field against Cincinnati. You saw Bostic on the bench set him up here after the interception. Ten seconds to go in the half. Here they go play it safe. McCown launches it to the end zone. And ball is caught by Marshall, but he did not have both feet down. That is an excellent job by Jimmy Smith. Know the rules. Let him catch it. Push him out of bounds. Does not get the second foot down. Boy, what a job by Marshall. He knows it. And he's trying to get that second foot down. But again, Jimmy Smith sees the football. That, that allowed him to go ahead and make that play at the last second. Out comes Robbie Gold. A little... Will Gimpy was Marshall to the sideline. Here comes the field goal attempt from 46 yards. The close out the half. Gold's kick. It's good. The Bears have come up with 10 points off of a pair of Flacco interceptions. Brings us to halftime at long last. With the Ravens holding on the lead here at the intermission at 17-13. Baltimore 17, Chicago 13. 
And we'll be back with James Brown. The NFL on CBS continues. That Robbie Gold field goal at the end of the half was the fourth time this year he has kicked a successful field goal at the very end on the last play of the first half. And we're now having yet another little system moving through here on the back end of this cold front that has the goalposts swaying. And again, the gusts really reaching some pretty significant numbers. Let's take a look at the Intel first half performance. And there's Rice, who had 70 yards on 10 carries and a touchdown. Also caught three passes. So Flacco gave it to him. Down there on a third and goal for the game's first points. Just when you thought we were finished talking about weather systems moving through, there is one more little issue to deal with here. What's the, what's the old thing they say? If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. That's, That's right. what we're doing here. Exactly. We got every system in the world coming through. The fans are buckling down, trying not to win. It, it's affecting even the fans. And we know that uh, in the state of Illinois, uh, there has been some serious damage southwest of here, a town called Washington in the Peoria mm -hmm. area. And our hearts go out to everyone down that way affected uh, by the tornado activity that uh, rolled through the state of Illinois midday today. All right, Phil, let's uh, get a thought here before we uh, get the second half kick. Well, the, the thought is it looks like wind is definitely going to be part of this football game. We've seen it really affect the punters, and they hard to even get the football up in the air. The quarterbacks, what can you say? Joe Flacco tried to force the football down the field one time, but the weather not affecting them very accurate with their throws. You get open, these quarterbacks will get it to you. We've even got debris flying and circulating all around the interior here of Soldier Field. And when you play in a wind like this, Jim, you know, as a as a punter, a kicker, or a quarterback, it, it's it's going both ways, so it's hard to judge what you need to do with the football. How about that? Ball's on the ground and falling on right there on the spot at the 29-yard line. And it's Ed Dixon who fell on it. Flacco threw the touchdown to Torrey Smith, but he had two picks. McCown, 50% throwing, 84 yards. It's amazing. If you'd asked me what, I said McCown, probably 15 to 20. You know, it's my perception was he played about as well as you can play. And Numbers do lie, as I always say. With Rice at running back. A right tackle. And he's able to step ahead for six. A lot of good stuff for this Baltimore offense in the first half. Ray Rice running the football. Joe Flacco. Uh, by and large, getting very good protection to do what they want, throw the football short, and then the, getting time to throw it down the field if he wants to. Second and four. And it's Rice again. This time, nothing unfolds, and he's dropped back by James Anderson for a loss of two. Defense guess right. They are slanting. Watch the feet of Ray Rice. Pretty good traction. But he realizes nowhere to go. Trying to make a sharp cutback on a good field. He was not going to get another yard. I tell you, the gusts are at their max right now. And be interested to see if Flacco decides to throw it here on third and six. How it affects his throw. Well, he zips it right in there for the completion of the first down to Tandon Doss. Excellent call by Jim Caldwell, the offensive coordinator. 
run a play where you can throw it right in front of the quarterback. The formation really gets it done. The three guys, I talked about it, when you bunch up, defenders usually back off. They did. Easy first down for the Ravens offense. From the 42 first down. Rice runs low for seven out to the 50. You said it right. He can run low. And Vontae Leach, fullback, been doing it a long time. Watch the block by number 44 as he goes up inside. And it is connection, and Ray Rice cuts right off of it. John Bostic didn't see many of those fullbacks down the SEC. The Ravens ranking 30th in the league and rushing in the 73 per game. A franchise low average, but already over 100 today. So they picked it up as you see Wagner shifting around to that left side. Second and three. And it's Pierce for the first down. Another good block by Marshall Yonda. He is having an outstanding day blocking. It seems every time he pulls, he's making solid contact and just driving guys out of the way. He is, you know, probably the most consistent offensive lineman, him and Michael Orr. And they feel pretty good about that right side. They should, you know. Radkowski taking over at center for Matt Burke, who was such a great leader for the Super Bowl champs. Yeah, that's a big deal, trying to overcome that. This wind is, Jim, it's, it's got to be 40 miles an hour right now. Third and one. Inside give to Leach. Stacked up. Yeah, it looks like the spot from the far side is more favorable for Baltimore than the near side. You know, you talked about Matt Burke. First he, down. He retired. Of course, I saw Matt Burke recently. And man, he's in unbelievable shape. Dropped a lot of weight. But the communication. And when you see blitzes, it's always up to two guys on the offensive side to take care of a blitzing defense. The center and the quarterback. So, Gronkowski get, getting the hang of it. And, of course, the communication is getting better. And it needs to because Joe Flacco has been hit too much so far this year. First down give, Pierce, Hurdles, but is still tracked down for a loss behind the line by Bostic and Bass, the two rookies who have made. Well, each has had an interception, and they combine on that tackle. Yeah, they do a good job. This field, it would, I would really hesitate to go outside anymore. You just got to watch your footing so much. Hard for linemen to keep the connection on who they're blocking, and just too slow getting to the outside. They've had the football for four and a half minutes to start the second half, second and 13. And just as Rice was trying to make a second cut, he lost his footing for no gain, and Peppers was there waiting on him anyway. Julius Peppers having a solid day, too. What did he tell us? He was not practicing much the last couple weeks, just trying to rest up, get his legs underneath him, and it's improved his play. So this feels a big difference on Sunday not having to go quite as hard during the week of practice. That's right. That's what counts. They've hit two third down conversions on this drive. And finally, they wave this play dead. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 90, five-yard penalty, still third down. Yeah, we were talking to Julius Peppers, Jim. I was looking at him going, man, that's a big man. I mean, just naturally big. And then I started laughing. I go, my gosh, how was it playing college basketball? You must have just been a bully pushing people around. He, he laughed. I think he was. Third and eight. Oh, got it away. Got the hookup with Doss. How about that throw? Joe Flacco, very compact motion that time. And Doss, zone defense, hooks it up and 
Flacco just drives it through the wind or with the wind. I'm not sure, but it's a perfect spiral, and it's right on target. Good for 11. That arm so strong. Doss with a couple of cut catches. That's three, actually, on the day. Flacco self-taught, really, the throwing motion. Yeah, we said that during the Super Bowl. First down. For two for Rice. Yeah, There's an old quote Flacco gave us one time. He said, yeah. you're going to talk about my throwing motion. I'm not listening. <laughs> I don't like, know about it. I don't want to know. I think what I'm doing is working pretty well. Yeah, I think it's doing okay, Joe. But it's true. It's very natural. And quite honestly, Jim, if you taught somebody how to do it, but technically the right way, Joe Flacco's way of throwing is how you'd like to see most quarterbacks do it. Second and eight. Rice. There's one up first by Bostic. And it's no game. You saw the chain gang on the sideline just having a whole hard time holding on to the markers. They are. It's it's blowing the marker because of that little pad they have there. That wind's catching it. They're hanging on for dear life. Take that out in the water out here. You could fly around. What do you call that? Wind surfing. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Doss is back in. He's had a couple of catches on third down to extend this drive. Third and eight. As Flacco sails over the head that time of Torrey Smith. And what about the decision making here with all this wind? I, I don't know what to say. You know, I just can't tell if the wind's helping or against. It's changing so much. It's like they're going to go for it. Yeah, that's a, that's the call. Cook was uh, was almost out to the numbers, and then I think they had a little change of heart on the sideline. Well, you, you know what would bother me about a field goal, and especially even punting, which I thought if you're into the wind, you might punt, but it would be the snap of the football. That could be a big problem. So they'll go for it. Fourth and eight. Pressure from behind. Ball is out. And it doesn't matter the recovery. It's going back the other way to Chicago. Just signed this week. Cheetah Ozugu was the one who hit Flacco. Here he is, 95. Knocking the ball out. And the Bears take over. Gus over 40. And it's raining and it's nasty. Bears take over after the Ravens had the football for half the quarter and come up empty. Flacco recovered his own fumble, but it didn't matter. It was fourth down. On first and ten, cutting it outside is Forte. And he's tripped up by Ladarius Webb after three. Jim, what happened on the fumble? Fourth down, pressure on Joe Flacco, but watch the three receivers top of your screen. When you look at it, nobody is going to be open. Even if he has time to throw it, they're all covered. So really good job by the Chicago Bear defense. Ozubu. Yeah, just signed this week. He was one of the Rocco. Second and seven. Forte again, side steps. A tackle at the line and is able to pick up three out of it. Eight carries for 53 yards for Forte. Forte went over 6,000 scrimmage yards on his career last week. He came out of that same draft as Ray Rice. They both were uh, picked in the second round, these running backs who, when the day started, they were only separated by about 15 total yards. Go, go, go. Hey, Third down and four. Go in the round again with Jeffrey. And it's open. It's open for the first down. His second in the round of the day. The first one went for 11. This one good for seven and a first down. Boy, fake me out. Just a good job faking it up inside. And what a good job by the fullback, Fiametta. Pulls around, seals the outside. What's the fullback, 43? Boom, he blocks it. And Jeffrey picks up the first down. Yeah, Fiametta just put that one little move on Suggs was enough to seal the edge. What? Really what well designed. And only the second right. third down conversion of the game for the Bears. They go inside with Forte. And he's down to the Baltimore 40. 
five after a gain of three. We showed you just a short while ago how important the game is on the AFC North side of things. How about the NFC North? As the Bears come in here at 5-4 and four after a 3-0 and start. And after this game today, Phil, they have four of the next five on the road. They really need this one just like the Ravens need it. As you made that point all week. Yeah, Bears really, all the injuries. What did Mark Tressman say about the injuries? Oh, this is exciting because we get to work with some new people and try to overcome. You don't hear that too often. Second and seven. They're lying on the ground as Forte has Canty on his back. And another three yards picked up at St. Louis, at Minnesota. The one home game in that five-game stretch wedged in there, Dallas, then at Cleveland, at Philadelphia. I don't even look at schedules anymore and go, oh, they can win this one and that one because you just don't know. Every week is tough in this NFL. We see it today. Jacksonville had Arizona down. Great. Mark Trestman telling his team, embrace that adversity. Third and four. And the Ravens are all over that one. As Forte is wrapped up first by Arthur Jones. Only a yard gain, so it'll be fourth down. Fourth yep. and three. They're going to punt it. That's the right thing to do. They What they did, they faked the reverse that time, Jim. Going to the other side, uh, you know, this Raven defense is so big, they can just stand in there and slug it out, and they stop that run. But the wind, the weather, play field position. That's Webb back to return. They've been alternating uh, returners today. Jacoby Jones and Doss have already been back. Punch. Now it's Webb who's not going to have a chance to handle it as that one comes slipping off the side of the foot. It goes out of bounds, though, at the 13, 29 yards. Took a step back there to catch that football. I think was moving. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Charles Schwab. And by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Late third quarter here at Soldier Field and... The Ravens take over at the 13. Pierce gets to the outside. And Tim Jennings rides him out. He was running behind Ponte Leach. He picked up a nice gain. Give him eight. Beautiful decision by Pierce. Watch it. Instead of just plowing in there and taking the hit, he goes outside. Ponte Leach, who said it, Jim, gets the block and picks up, what, eight yards. Well, this field. We got some mutters. A little bit of a throwback feel to it, isn't it? Yeah, it feels good. It looks good. Dirty uniforms. You gotta love it. Here is running play right into the back of Michael or Pierce for a loss of one. Yeah, just got too close to the offensive lineman. The separation, if it just a little more separation there, I think he's gonna make the cut and pick up the first down. This Bears defense, we talked about it. Two rookie linebackers, defensive lines beat up. Charles Tillman out for a few weeks, playing very simple defense, not taking chances. And so far, it's worked. Deontay Thompson in as an extra receiver, third and three. And Pierce, they're going to spot him a yard short. Going to mark him down at about the 22. That's interesting. Was he down? He was on the pile, but it looked like he was on the back of some offensive players. See if we can tell. Mm. Now out comes Cook to punt. Challenge flag in the hands of John Harbaugh, but... Looks as if he's going to let that one go. Hester. 13 career punt return touchdowns. Including one already this year at Washington. And that's going to drop by Bowman in the back with the block. He had tried.
Bromwick in the back to Bowman. So there's Trowick on the tackle. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 38. Ten yard penalty. First down, Chicago. Timeout. Tenth penalty of the game. The second special teams penalty of the day against that Bowman changes field position by 16 yards. Bears from the 17. During the uh, timeout, actually trying to make sure the goalpost is still level. Yeah, they are level. We saw something that we've probably never seen in the game. The wind was blowing. How do I say this? In opposite direction. Both exactly. goalposts were downwind. You see that it's. I guess that tells you for sure it's a swirly wind. Yeah, it's still the case. They're both, as you say, downwind at the moment. Second and five. Wait. What happened? He's getting a lot of handles here in this quarter. He's got four more, but it'll be third and one. We're just showing Matt Forte. Eight runs, no passes. But when you watch him play, and, and over the years, you can't really see a difference in him. And running backs, it, I think it's pretty easy to see. You see, go, you see him in person, you go, ooh, he's a half step slower than he was two years ago when I saw him. But when you watch Matt Forte, still looks as strong and as fast as he was when he came in the NFL. They're going to let it run out here and switch ends. It's the end of the third quarter with the score. Baltimore 17, Chicago 13. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. Well, this uh, latest weather isn't just a short-term issue. It continues nope. to fall, and it is very blustery here. We got a third and two to start the fourth quarter. And how about the play calling, the choice of plays by the Bears in that third? What did you make of that? I, I make of it, let's manage the football game. That's what you do. Just wait. You know, just let the action. If Baltimore makes some mistakes, that's great. But we are not going to. So Mark Tresman must feel like on the field, the wind is going to help them now instead of being against them. Longtime coach up in Montreal who surprisingly said he really seldom had weather issues up there leading the Alouettes to a couple of great cups. That's not even fair. Looks like only about a yard to go. Little movement. Oh, and it's against the Bears here. All start. All start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Third down. We're talking about a Tressman. We're talking about of all things, uh, building a foundation here and just the reality about how this is a fourth quarter league. A four minute league, he goes, it comes yeah. down to four minutes to go in every game and it it, it really is. And uh, you get to that four minutes, he says, by being smart uh, and not turning the football over and unnecessary penalties. And really, his team has done that today. And the Ravens side, they've had six straight games decided by six, uh, seven points or less. They got Bush in the backfield on third and six. As McCann has an open target, it's Jeffrey. Graham ends the run after the catch at the 36, but it's good for 15. New set of downs. Yeah, I just don't know why they let him go. They do this bunch route, and Jeffrey comes across the field. So when you do that, that's what does it. When you're bunched up there, they get confused. Who is covering one of the three guys together? That's a big mistake by the Ravens defense because... To be that wide open in this league now, everybody is running those three receivers in a bunch now. McCown's first pass of the second half. It was in the first minute of the fourth quarter. Looking for Marshall. They make the call a catch at the 48. He had Jimmy Smith on him. Beautiful what this league is it's about throwing and great catches isn't it these wide receivers are phenomenal phenomenal when it comes to making catches like that pulling it in beautiful throw by McCown and McCown really for the first time today hurries him to the line and 
as Forte trying to drive the legs. Hell, that's actually Michael Bush for two. Talk about these receivers. We just saw Marshall. We saw Jeffrey pick up a big third down catch. These are some large targets. They are. And we've seen how you do it. You go, well, they're so big. Maybe they're not that fast. It doesn't matter. The target now in this league is more important than six foot six Martellus Bennett because you can give them formations where their size won't be a hindrance for the defensive back can maybe beat them up at the line of scrimmage. Here's one of them. To show you a good example. Second and eight. And that's Jeffrey. He was trying to turn and run upfield, but lost his footing after 15. Two receivers, top of your screen, going to go down and hook it up. One in the flat. Beautiful steps into it and just drives it. What a beautiful spiral. That's what Mark Tressman said. He goes, Josh McCown naturally can just spin the ball. He doesn't have to work to make it spiral. It's just a good throwing motion that we're seeing can work in this win. Little behind Marshall. The other thing I've noticed, you haven't heard the name Ladarius Webb today. Just about every single pass is going to Jimmy Smith. So sometimes when you are perceived to be the second corner on a football team, you better embrace that position because the football is coming your way. Boy, did Marshall have some nice high praise of Ladarius Webb this week. Sure did. Webb had contained him in a couple of previous matchups when Marshall was down at Miami. Holding the second best corner in the league behind Riva. Second and ten. Fighting near the first down. Ball came out on Jeffrey. The ball came out. Just the way the officials are trying to untangle the pile here. It doesn't appear they ruled him down. Well, they say recovery Chicago. Protection was good. Oh, the extra hit by Daryl Smith, and he just rips it out of there. What a job by Daryl Smith. Jeffrey was somehow able to recover. He was the one who came up with it out of the pile. Watch it when he goes to the ground. How does Jeffrey get this football back? It's down below his legs, and it looks like Smith will reach over and grab the football. No idea how he ended up with it. It's definitely a fumble. Again, that throw was to Jimmy Smith's side. And now you see Jeffrey doesn't have one hand underneath trying to fight for the recovery. Got a challenge flag out now yep. from the Baltimore sideline. He would be challenging the, uh, the recovery. Baltimore is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. Timeout. Now they want to go back and say... It wasn't a catch in the first place. 12 minutes to go here in Chicago. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Intel-powered 2-in-1s. Intel, look inside. And by Walmart. Walmart's got the season's hottest gifts at everyday low prices. Come in and see for yourself. Waiting for the ruling here. A challenge issued by Coach John Harbaugh on whether or not it was a catch. It'll be the third and 10 for the Bears or third and two. I sure think it's a catch when I watch it. Here's the catch, couple steps, clear possession, football move, element of time, it's all there and they rip it out as he's going down to the ground. Now when you bring this up, because they're cha challenging the completion, Jim, if you can see a way where Baltimore recovered this in the bottom of this pile, it still could be Baltimore's football if they rule it to be a completion. I don't see how Daryl Smith let Alshon Jeffrey get his hands back in there and reel it back in. So there's the issue, catch or not, and you feel very certain it's a catch. I do. When you watch it full speed, you can tell it's not a bang-bang play. And just to confirm, there is Jeffrey coming out of the pile, out of the scrum with the football. Well, it ends up. 
possibility too. Watch it full speed. Coming across the middle. Catch. Oh yes. A lot of time passes. Football move. All the everything that's in the rule book is right there. They've had a scoreless second half here. Sure took a lot of time, so. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Completed catch. Baltimore is charged with their first time out of the half. Baltimore is also out of challenges for the remainder of the game. So Jeffrey's third catch of this drive holds up. Well, Jim Harbaugh, I mean John Harbaugh, he challenged it because he knew the difference in third and long or third and short here really could give the Bears two plays. That's why he challenged it. I am, hey, I disagree all the time. I agree with that. That was a big play in this game. So that's why he said, let's take a chance and throw it out there. 12 minutes ago, you still got time to overcome if that decision hurts you. And they toss it outside. It's Forte, and he's got the first down on third and two. Jermon Bushrod really opened up that left side. The left tackle helped them gain 10. It's another way to run and reverse a counter play, whatever you want to say. The defense get them blinded by a little deception. And look at that blocking down the field. Bushrod just goes down there and gets it. But they run this play, not every game, but almost the Chicago Bears. And when do you see it? Situations just like we saw. Forte now with 79 yards on the ground. Yellow, yellow lady. Right, 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 Deepest right, penetration right, 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 right. for either team. Make it 78 for Forte, who's lined up seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. The ten. And he got out of that play in a hurry as D'Angelo Tyson downs him. Trying to catch the defense off guard, and it did not. Everybody covered. There's Good Jimmy quick Smith. decision by McCown, Jim. Jimmy Smith is going to bring the training crew off the sidelines. We'll take a short break here in Chicago. Jimmy Smith to the sidelines. Shockey Brown comes in for him. The wind has knocked down the pylons. And here's uh, the injury to Smith twisting and turning. Yeah, that divot. And also, you know, this wet field, Jim, you kind of said it, that you're, you're trying to watch your footing and your working your feet and you could get cramps pretty easy in a situation it's almost like running in sand second and 11 and the 11th play of this drive it started back at the 17. He's at the five and still on his feet, and he's across for the touchdown. Matt Forte. What a play call. You could hear Josh McCown checking off the white, white, white. That's what I thought I heard. But he saw tight man coverage, and Kyle Long gets the block on the man that was covering Daryl Smith. He gets the block. It was man-to-man -man coverage, and that's why Matt Forte can get it into the end zone. Smith had a shot at him. Graham had a shot at him. Beautiful. He had a bow without a helmet. He was trying to hold on. What a great piece of running by Forte. And the Bears have their first lead of the day. That's the longest drive of the season allowed by the Ravens. Forte finishes it off with his 10th career touchdown reception. Matt Forte has put Chicago ahead. 28 to 17. 
and ten and a half minutes to go. You know, nowadays, Jim, it takes talent at the quarterback position, but you have to be a very quick thinker and make decisions out there before and after the snap. And Josh McCown that time checked the playoff, got exactly what he wanted, and ran a play that was perfect for the defense that the Ravens were playing. Here's the very kickoff. Bounce it at the six. Kobe Jones picks it up at the five. And he is surrounded at the 10. Sherrick McManus and company hold him to a five-yard return. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Chase Freedom. Get your cash back. And by Verizon. Never be without football with NFL Mobile from Verizon. These Bear fans are fired up, and so too is Josh McCown talking here to Julius Peppers. Go get that flack off. That's what he's telling him. And the Bears defense stops Rice at the line for no gain. Wooten the first to get there. Yep. Wood was in there, Julius Peppers all over, and so was Landon Cohen. This has been some day here at Soldier Field. It's been played in driving rain, non-stop, high winds, one hour and 53 minute weather delay. And now we're inside 10 minutes to go. Flacco to Jacoby Jones. And he gets within two of the first. Gain of eight. Again, Ravens come in here at four and five. Cincinnati a winner today over Cleveland. And Pittsburgh prevails over Detroit as Roethlisberger threw four touchdowns. In a very tight division. But not wanting to let Cincinnati get out of sight. And that's the Ravens' approach. Third and two. The hands of Tandon Doss, who's made a couple of big third down catches, but not this time. The wind moved the football. That's why it was missed. Good shot coming right at you. Watch the football. It slides outside. And Joe Flacco, he can't believe it. Short pass to the flag. You think you could throw it through the wind? You can tell which direction the wind is blowing. It moved that football a good foot. Devin Hester is standing back at his 40, waiting for the punt from Sam Cook. Morgan Cox to snap it back. Hester might have a chance to return one. Well, let's it bounce instead. And it just deadens at the 30. A nice 51-yard punt by Cook. That's a football moving. And out of reach for Dawson. Would have given them a first down. Jim Nance and Phil Sims and the crew back here at Soldier Field. And Chicago with 9.05 to go with the lead at 20 to 17. And a handoff to Forte for three. And a reminder, don't miss the show that's in a league by itself inside the NFL with J.P. and Phil and Chris Collinsworth. The show the pros watch Wednesday at 9, only on Showtime. As we watch the end of the third quarter, you started talking about it, the wind. Mark Tressman thought that going the way the Bears' offense is going, now the wind is a little behind them. He ran the football every play in the third quarter. Looks like his decision in game management have been very good. McCown is five out of six in this half, and he goes in the round for the third time to reverse with Jeffrey, and he saw that Daryl Smith was closing in on him, and his... Drop for a one-yard loss. Well, when you in the NFL, you can fool them once, but it gets the second and third time. Man, that's that would be uncalled for. Great job, good pursuit, and Chris Canty kept his leverage outside the whole time. Here, it is third down. 
when you they're not getting to the passer you've got to play tight coverage outside you can't play zone and think that you're going to stop this passing offense and they're going to get up tight on tight on these receivers this time third and nine first down right to the 40 is where they need to go Usher McCown gets it away closing in quickly Elam but a flag is out Forte had made the grab and good for only a yard Personal foul, roughing the passes. Defense number 58, two hands shoved to the quarterback. 15 yards, automatic first down. Elvis Doomerville is called for this. And the Bears will have a first down. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the redesigned Honda Odyssey. Honda, start something special. And by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. After a roughing the passer call, the Ravens sideline furious with this one. Yeah. McKean. Yeah, they were furious, and my gosh, it happened so fast. You can see he doesn't even really get on the ground. He got I do not like that call, period. I, yeah, protect the quarterbacks. A little shove, and it happened so fast. I disagree. A first down for Chicago. As Michael Bush gets five. Been slugging along here since shortly after the game started. And then the fronts came rolling in. It was deemed to be dangerous. Stop play for an hour and 53 minutes and the gusts. Well, they continue. Right now, currently, Gust times up to 61. Mm. And since the delay, it was 10 nothing Baltimore going into the delay. It's been 20 to 7 Why Chicago you? since that time. Second and five for the Bears, and that's Bush again, wrapped up quickly by McLean for a loss of two. Yeah, this. Ravens defense, if they're going to get on a run and make it happen to this football team, it's got to be because of the defense. They have the talent, they got the corners, they got a little bit of size, they got edge rushers, they got to make it happen. And this is one of those instances, they got to get off the field under six minutes and only two timeouts left for the Baltimore Ravens. So if you want to make it happen, that means either blitz. Or try to cover everybody tight. Third and seven. The count. That caught and reaching for it. It's Jeffrey. Looks like they're going to spot him just short. They did blitz. They put the pressure. When you've got big wide receivers, you can make these throws. It's a pretty good spot. Looks like it's short, Jim. His knee went down before he really reached out. Going to call for a measurement. And if it is short, with 5.26 to go, let's say it's fourth and a foot, what would you do here? Well, let's see. Let me put my coaching hat on. It's a lot easier to make these decisions up here, of course. you got to go for it. You go for it to win the game. There is a quarterback on the other side that can fire down the field regardless of the field conditions. You have to respect that. And that is about what we have here. Fourth and a foot. Knee down. Oh, yeah. It's, it's probably a good full yard. John Harbaugh can't challenge that because they have none left. Oh, he's going to punt it. I am surprised. They've been so good blocking today and being physical up front. Like I already said, Jim, it, easy to make decisions. I would have gone for it here. But the defense has been good. Mark Trestman's going to play the field, the wind conditions, and the fact that his defense has been solid really all day long. Well, the last time the Ravens had it, after Jacoby Jones got pinned on the kick return down at about the 10 they forced a quick three and out so 
Yep. And here at this, be alert for a snap count to get drawn off sides. Snap it to the fullback. There's a lot that can go on here. Joe D. Camillus, the special teams coach for the Chicago Bears. He's got all the tricks. I've seen them all through the years with the teams he's coached. Here's Joe D. Camillus. Jeremy Kane is the snapper. Seeing action because Patrick Manley is out with a calf injury. Podlish is known as a good hang time punter in the league with that two step format. Webb is the returner. Fair catch signal and made at the 15. 28 yard punt. Flacco coming out down three. Next Sunday, NFL regional action. The Jets will be down in Baltimore as the Ravens begin that stretch of four out of five games at home. San Diego will be in Kansas City. We'll be there for that one, Phil. Some will see their game late, including Indianapolis at Arizona. All getting started with the NFL today at noon Eastern time. Next Sunday on CBS. Taken over with 4.48 to go in two timeouts. Blacko. Incomplete. He's going for Rice. Going in the area of Thompson. He was well covered that time. Joe Flacco, knowing the wind and what it's been doing, he just uncorks this. He throws it with power. That is a good job on the outside by Jennings. Reads the route, beats the receiver inside. Third and ten. Open man, it's Torrey Smith trying to make the move for the first, and that looks like a horse collar. There is a flag, there it is. And probably would not have needed the horse collar to keep him short of the first. And Bowman, who's already been flagged twice for penalties on special teams, is going to be the culprit here. Bowman playing for Tillman, who was put on first injured reserve. Foul. Horse collar tackle, defense, number 38. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Torrey Smith trying to straight arm. Grabs him from the back. Pulls him down. It's almost textbook as he pulls him down from the top of the shoulder pad. You can see almost pulls him back that makes that leg buckle. And that's why they put that rule in here. Because it was knocking players out right and left until they made the rule change. So on first down, open lane for Rice to the 15, running right behind the center, Gratkowski for 13. Good play call here, everybody expecting pass, good blocks up the field that time. Ed Dixon got inside and got Bostic. Nice cutting, keeping those feet right underneath him so he doesn't slip. set of downs at the four minute mark and it's back to Rice and another six yards picked up that is a very clutch kicker right there for the Ravens I would say to be safe anywhere you know Jim the wind wind is changing so much but it looks like it has died down a little bit but to be safe, 30-yard line would give him a very makeable chance. Second and four call. And going for the big ball. Looking down the field, and it's out of bounds incomplete. 
Deontay Thompson was the receiver. Jennings was the defender. You know, Joe Flacco feels like he's got a down to waste here. Second and five, and he goes deep. And that is perfect coverage by Jennings. He is all over it in great position. This is four down territory, too, for the Baltimore Ravens offense, of course. Thompson out there. We do not see Jacoby Jones on this series. Third and four. We'll see if they'll go for it. They have the two timeouts and the two-minute warning. Yeah, I, I kind of spoke too quick because the two-minute warning and two timeouts only needing a field goal. That's but it, it looks like they're going to go for it, though. That's Wooten. We've got a hand on it, and they keep the offensive unit on the field. For a fourth and four call. Pass caught. What a catch it is by Dallas Clark. To the 30, he reached out and got a paw on it. One hand. Pulled it in for 14. What a catch. Nobody is really open. I'm watching Dallas Clark go across. Chris Conti had perfect position, but Joe Flacco threw it the one spot where only his guy could catch it. Dallas Clark, we've seen him many years, Jim, make great catches for Peyton Manning. That was a tremendous catch yes, here. Yes, it the was. A huge one. Fourth and four. These tough conditions, he makes the grab and puts him at the 30. To the ground. And Rice pounds it ahead for three more. We move toward the two-minute warning. Yeah, that's why you run it, because now you want the field goal or a touchdown, but now you think about not only doing that, the clock, that's why that run was important. Two-minute warning in Chicago. You're watching the NFL on CBS. And that's about as light as we've seen as far as the breezes today. The gusts at Soldier Field were coming out of the two-minute warning with a second and seven on the way for the Ravens. It's about as light as it's been for the last, uh, the whole second half. It's, what would we call that about? You're the golf guy, about three club wins, two club <laughs> wins, something like that. I hit it low underneath it, so I don't know. But I will say this, that was some catch by Dallas Clark on a fourth and four to extend this drive for the Ravens. Football at the Chicago 27. Over to Thompson for another first down at the 16. Now we'll see. How these coaches play with the timeouts and all. Chicago has three. Think about this drive. The horse collar and the catch by Dallas Clark. Two. One fortunate play and then a great play by Dallas Clark to get him in this position. First down, Garrett Rice. Up the middle. Inside the 10 and down to the 5 first and goal to go. I guess the Chicago Bears are not going to use their timeouts. And if something happens here, they give themselves. What a catch by Joe Flacco. That snap moved quite a bit, and he had to reach out and catch it. Here's Rice, who had only 289 yards on the season through eight games. 289. He's got 116 today. you got to use your timeouts, the Chicago Bears, and protect yourself. If the Ravens score. 33 on this drive alone on the ground by Rice. And a first and goal with 38 seconds. And it's Rice getting it. Rice still on his feet. Down with a third and two. Tressman had walked all the way down to the five-yard line on the sideline. Mm. Baltimore called that, but I think. Yep, it does go. There's a charge timeout to the Ravens. 
Chicago did, you know, look, I think they should have called a timeout before this, Jim, to give themselves that extra time. You never know, good return, a lot of things can happen. And if they score a touchdown, at least you give yourself a chance to have a few plays on your next possession. Mark Tressman said it right, didn't he, on Friday. The game starts with four minutes to go. The rushing attack, so much maligned all season long for the Ravens, a big part of their success today. Will they punch it across or will they go up top? Definitely man coverage, everybody bumps. Second and goal. They go Brown. Bouncing around and nowhere to go. It's Rice to set back a yard. Chris Conti in company. That's where you got to get out of the play. Everybody's inside. They're daring you. They're playing. They're daring you to throw the football. And hard to stop them. Last timeout called by the Ravens with 11 seconds. Look, the numbers are there. There's, the numbers are such in the Bears' defensive defense favor that it made it tough to run it. And now time, 11 seconds. Can't throw it short. Can't get sacked. Yeah, in those two scenarios, the game's over. You lose the game right. if you're Baltimore. But they're going to... Try to get one throw into the end zone here and go for the win with 11 seconds. Here we go. They're going to read the quarterback and try to react to Joe Flacco. More than five hours after it started. Ball on the ground. Flacco back in the end zone. Too high. And there will be a field goal attempt to send this game to overtime. How about the snap? Never gets up. Probably slipped out of the hand of Gurkowski. Oh, boy. He'd have had some time and had his feet under him. Joe Flacco is going to hit Torrey Smith for the game winner in the back of the end zone. It's Jennings who falls to the ground after the incompletion. He closes in here on Torrey Smith. Yeah, watching Jim as he hits him, he immediately grabs his chest or his stomach. Now Chicago, two timeouts, we'll lose one here. Yeah, that will be the first charge timeout to the Bears, but we will be seeing in very sloppy conditions a bad field. Tucker attempting to tie this from about 21. That snap. The field, the football, I don't know what made it bad, but that bad snap might have saved the Chicago Bears. So Tucker, as Jennings is able to walk to the sideline, Tucker won it last week in overtime against Cincinnati. 46 yards out, 44 yards at Miami for a win. He's made so many clutch kicks in a year and a half he's got one from 21 it'll be Morgan Cox snapping it back remember we had one high snap already on a PAT that Cook did a good job of jumping up and getting it down this to tie it and the kick is good Kicker goes down. Watch this after the kick is off. It's McManus who came flying across. You'll see it here. There was contact, but there was no flag. No flag, and that's why, because they just looked at him and go, okay, there's a little contact. That was some good acting, too. So this 
game kicked off just a couple of minutes after 12 o'clock local time and uh, yeah. after what you suspect will be a little squib kick we're going to be five hours into it it's still not enough to decide things are you tired I'm loving it. Are you? Okay, good. I just want to know if you still had the endurance. You know, you're getting up there. I think <laughs> I think you're the one. <laughs> I'm the one who's, who's pushing a big milestone oh, yeah, birthday no. here. Yeah, but shoot, I'm like, you know, I could go all day. When I'm home watching games, I, I root for overtime. Especially a game like this, it's been exciting. And just look what the decisions we've had made in this game because of the conditions and the weather. It just changes everything for coaches. A lot of pressure. Here goes, come back, get it on the ground quickly. And the Bears take a knee with Michael Ford. And one second left in regulation. What do you do? in overtime Jim Nance they go to the field they have the coin flip you have a decided decision the win definitely helps you go in one way do you take the football or do you play the win of course this has only become something that you can debate as of a couple of years ago when the overtime rules were changed that's right you know if you're gonna get that first possession you've got you can only close it out with six with the touchdown so it becomes more speculative speculative Kneel down here, we'll send this to OT, and for the Ravens side, they'll be playing an overtime game for the second straight week. But you know it does. You, you're you able to maybe take the win just because it takes a touchdown to beat you and not a field goal. So it gives a little another option, I think, to these coaches. Again, one 15-minute quarter. The first possession, the game can end on a touchdown or a safety. If the score is tied after each team's first possession, the next score will win the game. There are no more coaches' challenges. The Ravens had run out of them anyway in regulation, but now all the rest of the way, it's booth reviews only. Right, two timeouts, so. You know, I look at this wind, shoot, I don't know, but I think Mark Trestman played it right. We saw Joe Flacco's throw into the wind one time. It is a, I, I think it does come into decision here. This will be interesting. If the Bears win the toss, will they defend the goal to the Bears' right? So they will have the wind behind them. Making sure they get the signal straight. Same with the Ravens. Look at the middle of that field, will you? Shit. Right, it's a little bit of an old school look to it, the way it used to be. Gentlemen, the rule of overtime is false. Each team will have an opportunity to possess the football unless the first possession results in a touchdown or safety. Each of you will have two timeouts. Fourth quarter timing rules will be in effect, and all replays will come from the booth. Okay? Visiting captain, we're going to call the toss. Tails. Call his tails. That ball, that it is a tail. You've won the toss. If you'd like to receive, which way would you like to kick? Okay, spin. Baltimore's won and we'll receive. Good luck, okay, good luck, man. So the Ravens want the football, and they will get it when the overtime begins shortly here in Chicago. Overtime about to begin. Baltimore trying to avoid what would be a three-way tie for second in the AFC North and stay only one game back in the loss column to Cincinnati. They'll play them again in Week 17. Meanwhile, the Bears can pull even with the Lions in their division after the Lions fell at Pittsburgh today, even though Detroit has beaten them two for two this year and have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. But a chance to pull even at 6-4. and four. Nonetheless, wins and losses. Slams it down the field and it drives right through the end zone. Flacco and the Ravens will start it at the 20 or will they? There's a flag down in the area where the ball was kicked. Which means it's going to be offsides against the kicking team.
Again, the conditions are so tricky. Offside on the kicking team, number 32. It's a five-yard penalty, and we will re-kick. These kickoffs today have been on the ground in a hurry. Remember what happened to Jacoby Jones in the second half when he didn't pick one up at the five until the Bears were already on him. And at the very top, one of the Bears left early. Well, the old special team coach, John Harbaugh, you know, immediately, no hesitation, re-kick it. He saw how they drove it. You never know. You can knock it down with the second line of return people. Or it gives Jacoby Jones, if you kick it low like that, the thing bounces right, they have a chance for a good return. Jacoby Jones, of course, had the 108-yard kick return for the touchdown in the Super Bowl, and the previous Super Bowl kick return for a touchdown had come from Devin Hester of the Bears, both here today. The Bears have now been penalized 111 yards on 13 flags. Big strategy here by Gold actually doesn't travel that far. It's on the ground. And picked up at the 30. And that's used check. Who has it? <laughs> wow. And this uh, five-yard penalty amounts to uh, a difference of about 17 yards for the for the Ravens. Next Stoltz. Little wobbly coming out of the pile. Stealth. Yeah, Stealth, he just gets run over. Man. And this is Hughes check, the rookie out of Harvard, who picked up the football and rammed right into him. Well, that's why John Harbaugh said, let's re kick it. Yeah, the 16 the win. 16 yeah. yard difference now. It's a ball spotted 36. Instead of the touchback, they would have had back. Oh, well, they would have taken the five-yard penalty, actually. They yeah. could have marked it off the end of that. It would have been at the 25. So an 11-yard net. It's huge. It's one first down, but also it's field position. It's everything. And that was a really good decision. Understood how it was going to affect the kick like it did the first time. And around with Jacoby Jones. And two Bear defenders are on him, including Bostic. And holding him to four. Major Wright was in on it also. Nice recovery by John Bostic. We talked about it, Jim. Two rookie linebackers. They come in at 6.30 in the morning. Who is in there ready to work with them? Lance Gregg injured. I saw him at practice on Friday. He was coaching these rookie linebackers up every single time he got a chance. Tim Jennings at the bottom of the screen. 26 of Chicago shaken up. At the end of regulation, back in. Second and six. Rice and a sprint out to the 49 and a first. He's getting stronger as this game goes longer. Yeah, he sure is. And then John Harbaugh said, look, Ray Rice, we think he's healthy. It's over that hip injury. You can see there's more explosion. The biggest thing I noticed in him today is power. So after contact, he's driving forward. And we've always said it many times, he runs very low. First down, as Flacco leaves the pocket and slides for a one-yard gain. Right at midfield. Remember, a first possession has to be touchdown to end it. Field goal, the Bears would get a possession. Rice for four more. He's up to 131. McCown under that hook, wanting his chance. Well, it's interesting. Just when you said the rules of the overtime, knowing it takes a touchdown for this game to end, that could affect the defensive play call by the Bears, but nope, they're going to play it aggressive. They come up and challenge this offense. They really do. They have almost everybody on the line. 
One safety deep at the 30, third and five, and the pass incomplete. Off the hands of Doss and Jennings, who had again been shaken up at the back of the end zone, was able to reach in and deny the completion. They got what they want. They have outside technique by Jennings, but Doss needs to go across the field a little more. He goes up the field and is not able to catch, and that's a good no call. Look, a little pushing around the four or five yards, and then fight for the ball. Cook to punt. Cox to snap it back. Hester, will they punt it to him or try to kick it out of bounds? Something that Coach Harbaugh discussed with us last night. Ball just plugs into the 20-yard line. Almost embedded. Just a little idea. Some five hours ago, Ray Rice scored a touchdown. Then the hour and 53 minute weather delay where the stands were clear. Out of the delay, the rookie fast with the pick six. But back came Flacco with the touchdown throw. And then the Forte touchdown on a third down play to give the Bears their first lead. And then at the end of regulation with three seconds from 21 out, Tucker was true to bring it to the extra period. And now since the Ravens have had their possession, if the Bears were to drive down and kick a field goal, that's all it would take. into the meat of the line and Chris Canty is there for the quick stop of one you said it right that's the meat this Ravens defense very big up front we've talked about it and look you're this Chicago offense you know you okay what you want to do first and foremost can you find a way to get one first down or maybe two just to change field position that, that's the normal, even though the wind is behind them, sometimes punting the football with the wind behind you, you can never get it up high enough to take advantage of it. Ready. Ready, hunt. Second and nine in the count. The time. Yeah, the hand of Jeffrey. Daryl Smith was there for the Ravens defense. Well, this is a play they like to run, and just watch outside the receiver going across the middle. And everybody is chasing the crossers. And the pressure that time is enough to keep Josh McCown from finding Marshall wide open over the middle. There's a last second exchange with Marcellus Bennett, his tight end as they break huddle. Third and nine. McCown step up. Go! Gets the completion to Jeffrey and a first down. Same mistake that we saw earlier. They go to the bunch route. There's three guys. Watch the three here. And then watch when they break out. The defense, nobody chases across. Three guys cover two. Too late when they decide, oh, somebody made a mistake. And Corey Graham is upset because this is not his guy. He was outside and ended up taking the inside receiver. That's impossible. Jeffrey now with five catches since halftime. A count. Down the field. Go. And the ball is caught by Bennett. Still on his feet at the 25. And Graham finishes him off at the 21. And the Bears are in field goal range. That's the throw of the day for Josh McCown. I mean, he catches every bit of it. Again, oh, and it's against Ladarius Webb. And we talked about it. John Harbaugh said it when they're covered. These big guys can get it done. Turns that front shoulder and lets it go, and it catches all of it. Beautiful spiral with power and dead accurate. I thought a couple of plays ago coming out of the huddle, there was something exchange between the quarterback and the tight end and there they hook up for 43 yards that's Forte for another eight
Well, I was going to say, in these conditions, you've got to toughen up on the defensive side and try to stop them right there. But this run, the closer they get, the less chances anything's going to go wrong in this field goal attempt, if it comes to that. Second and three. Forte will get back yardage. That's Canty, who's had a very aggressive game today. Loss of four. Sure has. He, the old phrase, which I'm not fond of, but he stepped up today big time. He's been playing well, but Peloti Natai out there, he needs somebody on the inside to get it done, and he has definitely done that. And Forte appeared to be hurt on that play. Staggers to the sideline. Michael Bush comes in for him, and Robbie Gold. May be called on here in just a moment. It's third and seven. From this point, if they fail to pick up any yardage, you'd be talking about 38 yards. Timeout, Chicago. It's a good timeout. Go over what's going to happen if you see the blitz, what we do. Offensive line, under no circumstances, have a holding penalty to drive us 10 yards back. And, of course, tell the quarterback, which he already knows, Take no chances and get rid of it fast. So that's just a few things to say, Jim. That's what they tell you. They tell you everything during the timeout because that's what you do. I thought the timeout, they might be trying to get Forte back on the field. Mark Tressman not even out on the field talking to Josh McCown is Jay Cutler doing the talking. Hey, they're going to go ahead and bring gold out here on third down. And, and this is, I'm sure, because of the wins. A lot of these snaps, even on the uh, specialty kicks, have been at times very difficult to field. Yes, that, that's why they're doing it. Field, win, the football could be slick, and it just shows you how much they trust their place kicker in these conditions. 38 yards for the victory, Robbie Gold. Push on the hole. Here's the kick on the way, and that kick is good, they say, and it was close. It didn't make it by much. Podlich did a good job getting this down. A little inside on the snap. Mm. Barely inside the right upright. Yeah, it was. And what a game by the Bears. Undermanned. Backup quarterback. Robbie Gold delivers it from 38 yards. And the Bears go to six and four. See, this Bears offense, I'm impressed. These conditions, Josh McCown, another solid, really good outing. He is four for four this year when it comes to coming in and just getting the job done. Pulling even at six and four with the Lions. Again, even though the Lions have beaten them twice, big win by the Bears. The Ravens, meanwhile, fall back into a three-way tie for second. Some two and a half games behind Cincinnati and the AFC North. Robbie Gold, the winner from 38 yards, trying to gauge the win just right. It was just barely right. He got it done. He got it done. Five hours and 16 minutes after it started, Chicago has the victory. One more look at the winning kick that was so close. For Bill Sims and all the crew, Jim Nance saying so long from Chicago. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. We'll join James Brown in New York after this.